off the record. The concept of meat that we really don't know where it's coming from has always fascinated us as a species. No, really, stick with me on this one. Back in March 3rd, 1876, at around 12 p.m., for a period of several minutes, existed an absolutely strange bit of history that took quite a long time to figure out what was actually happening. Meat, like actual meat with DNA, began raining out of the sky. <laughs> People suspected maybe it was a bacterium that had gotten seeded into a cloud somehow, or maybe it was some sort of slime kicked up from the sky. Really, nobody had any answers as to what it was. Some people went as far as to eat whatever this substance was, saying that it tasted like bad venison. This would remain a mystery to all those people people at that time until decades later. The mystery was finally revisited. It was discovered that despite all the other lines of thought, and surely the impossibility of meat falling from the sky, it was in fact meat. So then the question became, how? The predominant theory now is that a migrating group of vultures ended up getting into either bad meat, or for some reason, the group just evacuated the contents of their stomach over a small town, creating this meat shower upon the poor people below, which left the town smelling terrible for weeks after. So, oh man, huge Jeff in the chat for those that actually ate this meat. But the thing we learned from from this specific event is, if you find meat where it's not supposed to be, probably best just to leave it alone. Enter SCP-274, a bit of a strange existing Keter class SCP that should it escape from the confines of the Foundation, it's hypothesized that it could take over entire city's infrastructure in just a little over two and a half weeks. This SCP is a type of spreading meat that can ultimately create human figures to continue spreading its influence. But the question is, how exactly is it able to accomplish this, and what makes it so successful? Well, let's discuss this in the Off the Record Log. Item number, SCP-274. Object class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures. Any buildings found to be infected with SCP-274 are to be reported immediately to a superior and the leader of a mobile task force PI-1, City Slickers. MTF PI-1 is to incinerate cases of SCP-274-1 and secure the infected buildings by forming a quarantine with a one kilometer radius under the guise of a local police and fire department. MTF PI-1 is to terminate any cases of SCP-274-2 through the use of high-pressure fire hoses. Civilians insisting on entering an instance of SCP-274-1 are to be detained and have one Class B amnestic administered. Any apparatus used to contain or handle SCP-274 should either be incinerated or entirely composed of metal or glass and washed thoroughly immediately after use. The cover story for containment breach of SCP-274 should be gang-related arson. SCP-274 is much like any cancer that you may find. In fact, despite the logs remaining vague about this aspect of its biology, there are several hints as to what this creature is and how it is able to progress in the way it does. By the containment procedures, it's clear that we are dealing with a biological substance just like any and most forms of SCP. This one, however, may appear to be much more related to something like a simple cell, like a slime mold for instance, but I assure you it's more complex than that. In the similarities that it does share, in the beginning the colony is small, but it can continue to grow and grow until it has engulfed everything around it and in this slime, which will then be used, and if it's organic or contains minerals, to be broken down and absorbed by the SCP. But what sort of cell is it exactly? Let's first take a look at the description, which gives us a good idea of what we'll be discussing later. Description SCP-274 is a paint of variable color. Buildings inflicted with SCP-274 appear to have a large amount of graffiti covering the sides of the building and often have large, disturbing designs to them. See Adenum-274. While its consistency is that of normal paint, its composition reveals it to be 28% hemoglobin, 12% gastric acid, and 60% common components consistent with Krylon brand spray paint. When SCP-274 is applied to a wall, it will begin to spread until it has covered the wall and any walls attached to it. SCP-274 is unable to spread on metal, glass, or horizontal surfaces. While SCP-274 spreads on buildings, it will convert the interior of the wall into a large mesoglea. The interior walls into a gastrodermis, and the exterior walls act as a protective shell and epidermis. Buildings coated entirely with SCP-274 will become cases of SCP-274-1. I would go out on a limb concerning 274 and say that the method by which it is carried and sprayed on the walls, which sounds pretty nasty now that I say it out loud, is pretty much irrelevant. However, what's on the inside is really what counts, and this is where the money shot is. If we take a look at the components of the spray being hemoglobin, stomach acid, and compounds consistent with simply Cryon brand spray paint, this would say to me that this is simply a cell that is inadvertently come into contact with the spray paint and it had ill effects. And considering the exposure to certain spray paints is absolutely known to cause cancer in the lungs if 
if inhaled over a prolonged period, then this would imply that potentially any cell caught in the midst of this spray paint is going to have a bad time. Let's take a trip back to basic human biology for a moment, which will give us an idea of how this can happen. The human cell on its own is horrible at surviving. The reason for this is it's part of a multicellular organism, and because of that, it needs to be shut off should its usefulness be passed. Otherwise, it could become something like a cancer. When a single cell becomes part of a multicellular organism, think of it as like a contract being entered. The cell has to abide by the rules of what's good for the organism, not just itself, and its benefit is it becomes protected and is able to be better at survival. So without chemical messengers coming from other cells, a human cell on its own will expire just as nature intended. And this is why it's difficult to grow human cells in a lab. The cells just don't survive. A cancer cell is like a cell that has broken this contract. Rather than expire after not receiving chemical messengers or undergoing apoptosis should it be ordered to by an immune cell, the contract in the cell is destroyed either by a gene being broken, a mutation arising, or a whole myriad of other issues. When the contract is broken, nothing is keeping that cell from dividing, and so it just remains unchecked. As long as the cell and colony receive nutrients, they will continue to grow despite no signals from other cells. They are effectively reverted back to a single-celled organism in some capacity. In fact, there was a woman who I've mentioned several times in several of my videos named Henrietta Lacks. Back in the 1950s, when she contracted cervical cancer, some of her cells were actually taken. She ended up expiring, but those same cells are still used to this day to conduct experiments on, and it is hypothesized that literally trillions of her cells have been grown in the almost last 70 years, all because cancer is able to exist outside of the human environment, and in any environment that has nutrients, then it's really just able to survive. With 274, the cells themselves mixed with a Krylon, and this would suggest that not only was the carcinogenic nature of the spray paint converting these cells into essentially what is cancer, but the nutrients within the can itself must be providing the nutrients to the cancer cells. I also have my suspicions about how these cells got in the spray paint to begin with, but we will get there momentarily. Because what we see next with the cancer cells is while they have effectively reverted back to a more primitive single-celled colony, or at least had their genome altered to the point that they can survive alone, they still may possess what originally made these cells the hypothesized human that I believe them to be. Description continued. SCP-274-1 exhibits signs of life, react to stimuli, and behave in a manner similar to many species of the Anthozoa class. Buildings converted into SCP-274-1 lure passing civilians by emitting noises from inside SCP-274-1. Sounds of glass breaking, loud coughing, or pained whimpers have all been reported from D-class personnel. It is currently unknown whether SCP-274-1 or the SCP-274-2s are responsible for this behavior as the noises stop immediately upon entry. Typically, Civilians will either call the police or investigate the noises themselves. As subjects search inside SCP-274-1, they will be recognized as food by instances of SCP-274-2, if any are present. When a victim enters a room inside of SCP-274-1, barring the entryway, they will be immediately suctioned into a gastrovacular cavity belonging to SCP-274-1, later processing them into SCP-274 and one instance of SCP-274-2. For anything in this world to survive, there needs to be an exchange of material. For plants, it's inorganic material as it becomes organic glucose. For iron oxidizing bacteria, that's from dissolving a ferrous iron and then oxidizing it. For humans, that's eating meat and vegetation in order to obtain glucose within it to really power our own bodies. For me personally, it's a form of bacteria that has invaded my sinuses and makes me sound really weird. Hopefully, it's not SCP-742. <laughs> I guess stop joking around like that when the uh, superiors are nearby. Anyways, but for 274, it appears to start out as one thing and then turn into another. It is said that the 274, when sprayed on vertical surface, because it cannot exist on horizontal, will grow to take over the wall and other sizzes and also differentiate as long as they are not metal or glass. So basically, completely inorganic material. But most materials that we actually build with, you might not think this, still have plenty of glucose within them. What? Drywall, for instance, is massively susceptible to moisture and contains gypsum and other organic materials, which hypothetically could be incorporated into a cell should it sit long enough on that substance, breaking it down. Things like brick, which are made out of clay. Oh, whoops, sorry, wrong brick. Things like brick, which are made out of clay, could also still have remaining organic compounds that 274 may be able to use. I mean, after all, we do have bacteria, which is a cell that can break down iron. I believe at first, when the cells are just starting out after being sprayed, they will spread out, saturate an area, and begin a chemical reaction with the vertical wall. Due to the effects of gravity, the cells will know which way to grow, but if placed on a horizontal surface, they would not be able to grow upwards, sort of like how plants do. Also, if placed on metal or glass, there is not enough organic compounds to stabilize the cells 
and they will eventually expire. And this same parameters of life apply because we know the cells can be dispersed with either fire, which will definitely destroy them, or with a fire hose, which will disrupt their lines of nutrition, thus ending the cell through starvation. Once starting out, they will permeate through materials and within it, getting to wood, drywall, brick, anything that has organic compounds as it continues to grow, and because it is a cell, it has a purpose. It will engulf an area, breaking down the food source and sharing it amongst the other cancer cells. Luckily, because it would hypothetically come from, say, a human cancer cell, in this instance, it would have access to stomach acid secreted by those cells. Luckily for it, not for us. Now, there's an entire process of this based on proton pumps, but for now, just know the cells still possess all their functions, and because they are cancer, they are no longer specialized to do just one job. Then, as the creature continues to take over a building, eventually a switch would be flipped. 274 goes from just a mass of cells to possibly somewhat sentient to fully sentient. And again, considering that we see differentiation already in 274, it's not too hard to think that possibly some neurological activity could begin. But this is explained that it will begin hunting. This could be due to the fact that it does still contain human genetic coding, which means potentially even a nervous system may be growing somewhere during this time frame. But this is where we begin to see the second stage take off. Description Conclusion Specimens of SCP-274-2 are organisms composed of SCP-274 that appear as men or women wearing a gas mask or respirator along with a bright pastel colored hoodie. SCP-274-2 is able to support its heavy weight by its thickness and density in its membrane, which consists of 45 to 50% of the mass of SCP-274-2. SCP-274-2 acts as a nematocyst for SCP-274-1 and can disguise themselves by merging into walls. This is done by heavily compacting themselves and implanting itself into an interior wall, save for their mask, which flattens out around the wall and disguises itself as standard graffiti. This behavior has proven to be a means of ambushing food for SCP-274-1 and will only react when it detects something that it considers a food source. SCP-274-2 possesses a hinged operculum that ejects SCP-274 located in the right hand. This operculum looks identical to a normal spray can and can project SCP-274 in a similar manner. SCP-274-2 will attempt to spray SCP-274 into the eyes and mouth of its victims in an attempt to incapacitate and encapsulate them. This method of attack has shown to be very painful and will blind and numb the victim from the neck down. Once tagged, the victim is placed into a gastrovascular cavity, resulting in a new SCP-274-2. SCP-274-2 are able to duplicate themselves while inside of an instance of SCP-274-1 and will produce one new SCP-274-2 every 24 hours. Once 12 SCP-274-2 specimens reside in one SCP-274-1, we have got to get a better way of cataloging these. I don't know why the Foundation doesn't just let us call them dash ones and dash twos, but further cases of SCP-274-1 SCP-274-2s will leave SCP-274-1, find a new building to spray with SCP-274, while avoiding any people they may encounter. Once a building at least 2 kilometers away from another SCP-274-1 is found, the SCP-274-2 will spray SCP-274 onto the building until it has completely dehydrated itself of SCP-274 and dies resulting in another instance of SCP-274-1. If left unchecked, it is estimated that SCP-274 would cover a large city within 20 days. The hunting display by 274 would indicate to me that once using up the materials to grow itself in a building, it becomes much more predatory. This may simply be due to desperation or because of the formation of something else within the building. While unconfirmed, it's clear to see that the motives and needs of the organic mass change once a certain level are reached, and this goes back to why I believe this to be a human cancer cell rather than just some random happenstance. The first reason is the hunting patterns. Humans have been hunting for as long as we have been sapiens. Because of this, we have picked up quite a few tricks in order to get our prey to come to us simply because we can be easily outrun because we actually rely on persistence hunting. Mating calls have been one example. We will mimic another species and when that prey arrives to start getting frisky, boom, it's all over. We also use scents in order to attract prey, which is much more passive, but still quite effective. With this in mind, this would require a level of hunting rarely seen in other species, but this would also indicate that because of this ability, it may have stemmed from a human, meaning that the building itself, a neurological area, is likely being established 
finished, and when finished, the building goes from passive material acquisition to a more active form in luring its prey in, which is seen by the groans of pains, coughs, or whimpering. There's also the idea of propagating oneself. Now, this is standard with all animals for the most part, but the plan is to have kids to create more of yourself through the genetic lineage. Once the building gets to a point of stability, children are created. And this is the second reason why I believe this to also be a human cell having initially been converted. The makeup and structuring of the entire body is located within the DNA of every cell. The defining factor is differentiation. With the cancer cells having lost their differentiation and then potentially re-evolving back into it once the building has been overtaken, 274-2 are nothing more than the building essentially creating new children from the victims in which the building has ingested. Because of this, these people are now essentially paying child support in the form of gene donations. Once this has happened, these new children, or 274-2, will go out and continue to hunt until enough of them are created. The hunting method of spraying people in the eyes is sort of a complete asshat of a move, mainly because you're just basically being blinded by spray paint, but it also introduces this cancer into the body of the person, effectively sealing their fate. But after this is done, they will go out and tag other buildings, likely with their own brand of Monster House cancer which creates the next generation of hungry hungry houses. Once expending itself into the home, the original husk of itself will expire and it will continue on the process. Now the real question is, where did this stuff come from? I would highly advise backtracking the serial code data for these specific Krylon cans. It appears that where the shipping is coming from, there may be more than a few missing workers. It could definitely be hypothesized that a worker may have fallen into a vat and he may have actually already had cancer from years of being exposed to fumes. Once entering, he ceased to be, but his cancer cells continued to thrive. After more batches were made and packaged, this would be sent out. And this could be disastrous if these are not located and stopped at the source, or if the Krylon cans are not located because likely hundreds if not thousands of cans contain the same SCP waiting to be used in homes and spread. And considering an entire large city can be taken over within only 20 days, this could create issues for the foundation leading to an out of control spread of cancerous growths. And since then however, there have been several sightings of SCP-274 as follows. January 2001 SCP-274-1-1 is painted to resemble a large bus with a number on its side. The front of the bus has been replaced by a human-like face. The back of the bus is on fire. Bus patrons all look towards the front of the bus and do not seem to react to the fire. April 2006 SCP-274-1-2 is painted to look as if it's crumbling apart. At the base, people are illustrated to be running away from SCP-274-1-2 and a face can be seen forming from the falling rubble. March 2010 SCP-274-1-3 depicts a beach with three sharks in the water and several people running from the shore. This scene is illustrated behind a large cartoon tiki statue which takes up most of the front of SCP-274-1-3. August 2011 SCP-274-1-4 illustrates what is presumed to be Noah's Ark at sea. Creatures boarding the Ark do not match any known species. The Ark is depicted to have a face with several sharp teeth and eyes devoid of pupils or irises. November 2011 SCP-274-1-5 depicts several figurines and level 3 biohazard suits at the base. Figures are seen fighting each other for what appears to be a bottle of hand sanitizer. Several cadavers are piled on top of one another in the background, with a large green cloud in the shape of a canine-like face emitting from them. The face is shown laughing, presumably, at the people fighting. July 2012 SCP-274-1-6 is painted to resemble a mausoleum with a large human skull painted on its front. Illustrated at the base of SCP-274-1-6 are figures suffering from advanced stages of rigor mortis. Most notable is the several figures appear to be wearing the standard issue tactical armor distributed to MTF-PI-1. August 2012 SCP-274-1-7 is decorated with the scene of MTF-PI-1 setting SCP-274-1-7 on fire through the use of Molotov cocktails. A large depiction of SCP-274-2 can be seen attacking MTF-PI-1. August 2012 Operatives dead as a result of a large mob of SCP-274-2, numbering between 2 